Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, good whatever. I am here very, very happy to meet and introduce you a good and nice friend I met on an app called Clubhouse. And this is my friend from India, Sai Kartik. Sai Kartik, it's such a pleasure to have you here. Namaste, namaste. Namaste. I'll see you next. <laughs> namaste, it's, uh, Kartik. It's a pleasure to meet you too. I am really happy that uh, we are meeting here today. The, the reason why I invited you is because I want you to teach us and to share a little bit about what you, you do as work and also to tell me uh, what, where are you from? Um, I am from India, basically, the land of karma. They say India is known as karma bhumi. So karma siddhanta is what India follows. And more or less, people here in India believe in Sanatana Dharma. All right. So Sanatana means the old of the oldest. So I am a Sanatani. I follow Sanatana Dharma. And uh, I belong to one uh, particular Veda Shaka, which is Rig Veda. And then I in the system of Varna, I am a Brahman and a Vaishnavite. So we follow the system which is followed or which is actually shown to us by Sri Guru Madhvacharya and we are Vaishnavites. So I'm not against Shaivism. Uh, there is a saying or there is a sloka in uh, Sanskrit, which says, Shivaya Vishnu Rupaya, Shiva Rupaya Vishnave. So I believe in that. I believe Shiva is equivalent to Vishnu and Vishnu is equivalent to Shiva. So though I belong to Vaishnava uh, Pantha or Vaishnava, uh, we follow Vaishnava Siddhanta, uh, I don't have that Taratamya. Taratamya means difference. So we don't differentiate between both of them. Uh, and Karthik, and, can you can you just tell us how how do you get to be a Vaishnava or a Brahman? Is that because you were born in a certain family? See, uh, this uh, I would like to request. Uh, I would like to take two minutes to complete this question, if you don't mind, because this is a very complex question, and uh, anything which is misinterpreted or misquoted uh, will not give. Uh, or, or will not fulfill the purpose wholesomely. So let me put it across this way. Well, today, on a generic note, being born in the uh, Brahmana Kula or the caste gives you Brahmanatva is what is uh, taken into consideration more or less. But if you ask me, is this the exact way where Hindu Sanatana Dharma or the Sanatana Dharma on a whole consider, I would say no. In Sanatana Dharma says the Varna comes by what guna you have or by what work or profession you take up. So whosoever has Brahma Gnana, here Brahma Gnana is the ultimate knowledge. Knowledge of what? Knowledge of uh, maybe to to guide people who are not that well uh, mm, informed about shastras or about the way of living or about the research what the rishi munis or the people the ancient people who lived here have done so the scriptures uh, they believe that brahmanas would read the scriptures and tell this to mankind and showcase this uh, enlighten the people. So Varna system has now been uh, treated in a different way. But way back, we had a lot of, lot of gurus um, who were not from, I mean, not born as Brahmanas, but have attained or achieved Brahmanatva. So yes, as, as of me, I am born in a Brahmana Kula, that is Brahmana caste, and also uh, with divine grace, with my guru's grace, I have been um, initiated to learning philosophy, tattva, 
and uh, astrology and all the uh, sacred sciences. So I am both by Kula as well as my profession, Brahman. Yeah. So to be a Brahman, it means that you have a mission, right? And that you have to spread what your lineage is being working on during many, many years, many decades. Correct. Correct. Here, when you say the lineage, uh, the lineage, uh, here we have uh, one, one particular, for example, our, our forefathers were worshippers of Sri Hanuman. Have you heard about Sri Hanuman? Lord Hanuman. Yeah, so they were the worshippers of Hanuman and they believe the prana, I mean, prana is the vital energy, which is the jiva, I mean, which is, prana is jiva, jiva is prana, but where is this prana? If somebody asks you, where is prana, what will you say? Is it in your heart? It's everywhere. Correct. So what they believe is for you, the prana is in your breath. The breath you take is what your prana. Only uh, how do somebody recognize if the person is alive or not there anymore by just keeping your, their finger here near the nose. You know, if you're breathing, you're there. If not, you're not. So they believe the mukya prana is with you the immense energy is within you, you know. So Hanuman, uh, who is the actual Mukya Prana, uh, was, was the deity where my forefathers worship. And the same thing we are following today. So the main deity you worship is Hanuman, right? Correct. Correct. And you were talking before about Vishnu and Shiva. So you follow Vishnu because Vishnu has different types of rules or, or worship or what's the difference? See, uh, here Vishnu is, uh, there are three, three main, uh, main uh, gods, Brahma, Vishnu and Maheshwara. Brahma is known as Srishti Karta. Okay, the one who uh, generates, okay or helps to generate, or each and every creation is made by Brahma. The, he is the creator. He is the creator. Vishnu is somebody who is actually taken the responsibility of leading the creation and uh, seeing the actual smooth flow of what Brahma has already made. So he is the Vishnu. The Layakaraka okay, is Shiva or Maheshwara. So, Layakaraka, Laya means death or destruction. Destruction of what? Destruction of what is not needed is what actually is destructed by Shiva. So, when I'm worshipping uh, Vishnu, I will ask Vishnu to give me certain things. You know, the energy of Vishnu is different to energy of Shiva is what uh, certain people say. You know, so it again is a vast subject. Uh, maybe we will discuss about this in coming days. Yeah. Yes, we will. And one thing is uh, also there are like many lineages in India, right? And there are people also that worship Brahma or not? Only Shiva and Vishnu. See, it, it, see it's like uh, we have uh, Dashavataras. Okay? Sri Ramachandra Murti is also worshipped. Sri Krishna is also worshipped. You know, Sri Vishnu is also worshipped. We believe that the God, the ultimate, uh, I mean, the, the ultimate God, the creator has been manifesting on earth or taking form on earth uh, in a different ways for different reason, right? I'll give you a small example. Now, Alcione is a, a sister for somebody. She's a teacher for somebody. She is a daughter of somebody. She's a friend of somebody. And she plays different roles in different times. So God has also done the same thing. So whenever I want Alcione uh, to be my friend, I will address her as my friend. When I want her to care me as a mother, I will address the same person as my mother. When I want her to just 
you know, uh, have a little chat like a sister. Oh, sister, I will address her like a sister. So the same way, uh, we also have the same same pattern in a different way. You know, it it is like a same person playing different roles for different reasons. If you understand. And that's the reason why they say that in India there are so many demigods or gods because you have these these distinctions, right? See, because you can't see if you are showing me motherly love. Now you can't be my friend. A mother is different to a friend. So obviously, when I am treating a, a a god like a mother, then I can't treat the other person as a mother again in the same way. Yeah. So each and here the diversity is so so easy that whosoever has, I mean, people here have um, diversity and liberty to choose whichever energy has been working on them for a long time, from their forefathers or as you said, lineage or lineage. The lineage, uh, the forefathers have been accustomed to one particular energy system. And they believe that this is the energy which will work intact to us. And begetting this energy, or if we can constantly get this energy, then our overall well-being will be taken care by this deity. Is what our forefathers have believed in. And this this is a good opportunity to talk about how do you manage um, being respectful to the ancestors, to the forefathers. Is it important? Uh, we believe Pitrus are as important as um, gods, right? We inform, in, in fact, we give them the sthana of gods itself. We call them Pitru Devatas. So, yes, um, here, especially in our culture, the death ritual is actually one of the very, very vital and important ritual where we, uh, there are a lot of uh, ritual ceremonies which uh, a person has to do in order to uh, see that their forefathers and the, the person who has just left are sailing through safe to the destiny where he has to reach. By chance, if this is not done, they believe that that will bring them bad luck or that will trouble them in a different various ways. So that uh, Pitru Devatas are very much to be respected, regarded, and treated with highest regard because uh, we believe that though they are not uh, embodimentally with us, but they are here with us um, in the in the in the name of um, what say uh, symbolically they are there maybe the lightest way but not just symbolically. They bless us. They 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 give their uh, valid uh, uh, what's it? I would say the blessing is always there with us. Yeah. But that's that's all because you are aware of the presence and you are just like um, praying for them See. and uh, you don't feel that they are gone once they are dead, right? See. No, no. The system here, what we believe is. We believe in punarapi jananam, punarapi maranam, punarapi janane, jatane, jatare shayanam is what the uh, uh, Govindam, uh, Baja Govindam is one of the uh, hymns written by Sri Adi Shankara Charya, where he says, we believe, I mean, we have to believe that the people who have left us or who have just passed away from us will be reborn. So Hindu Sanatana Dharma as a whole believes in the system of uh, taking rebirth. There is no... Uh, uh, something called as, uh, uh, what's say, uh, we don't believe in the system where there is a last day where we'll have to, God will call us again and we'll have to, um, there, there, you know, we'll have to answer them, uh, answer the God. Till, till then we are just sleeping. It's not like that. As in, uh, we die, maybe if our karma is good, we take a good shape and come back again with, uh, with, with, a, with a all positive, uh, approach. If not, depending on the karma, we'll be born as something else and we'll have to face that. So uh, here, 
when somebody passes away we see to that the almighty god is giving them sat gati we believe in sat gati sat gati here means we believe in something called as certain lokas swarga and naraka or there are other lokas as well there are uh, different lokas so when we when we uh, when somebody passes away we believe that the person who has passed away has to get uh, placed in a right way somewhere and we believe they should always go to swarga the heaven right not to the hell so the ritual what we take after somebody passes away is just to see that the soul which has left us is properly guided and taken or 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 driven through to swarga yeah yeah so that's that's the ritual and we are talking about like a certain lifestyle um things that you do like are you vegetarian do you do you care about what you eat meat or not how, how does it work see absolutely very well asked um shri krishna paramatma in uh, 17th adhyaya says trividha bhavati shraddha dehinam sasvabhavaja satviki rajasi chaiva tamasi cheti tam shruno so almost all brahmins here i would like to first say what krishna paramatma has said okay so now krishna paramatma here says that there are three ways of worship or shraddha right in the three people they are first is uh, satvik rajasik and tamasik who are tamasik who are uh, rajasik and who are ta- satvik rajasik are the people who are the kingly people they are allowed to eat meat okay as per bhagavad gita they, are, they have the uh, permission to do that because they are the guardians they are the caretakers of the earth i mean the land where what they possess right so there should be valor in them they should uh, they should have that certain qualities so they can eat meat and the people who eat meat but also eat the stale meat for example not the fresh meat are called as tamasic people right so they are actually the adhamastha adhamastha people or the last category of people as per shri shrimad bhagavad gita so the people who eat that will not have right um, mindset and will not be obligatory and they will not perform right duties is what bhagavad gita says but in case of satvik people these are the people who eat or who maintain certain diet which is satvik vegetarian in nature in that being vegetarian people who don't eat onion or garlic and who don't eat another set of a uh, set of uh, vegetables which are not accepted by shastras you know or which are not generally which are rajasic or tamasic in nature the people who will not eat too much of uh, anything for example they don't eat too much of uh, uh, they don't take which is very sweet they don't eat too much salt they don't take too much salt the balanced diet is what is followed by satvic people and usually the vaishyas and the brahmanas here in india uh do follow the satvik diet along with jains and other set of people who are initiated to certain sadhanas yeah and does it happen that somebody who is first vegetarian starts eating meat also in india and they change to tamasic or not see it is like absolutely they are free to do that we don't have any law or we don't we don't have a system where uh, somebody is behind you with a stick or a bar or a cane Uh, who says oh no you are doing that and this no it depends on their faith so uh, usually what what uh, uh, elderly people here say is when you eat meat you acquire the quality of that particular um, i would say the meat you are eating itself maybe the meat is of goat the cow the chicken or whatever whatever so when you are eating it you are getting the quality of that so our forefathers view is just that block the external influence on you be what you are then is when you can you can attain moksha 
so always if you have external influence on you in the name of uh, diet in the name of other other factors on you maybe you will not stick on to one particular path maybe you will change your path time and again so they said a standard diet is needed number one number two as we all know uh, the diet is a major factor which will influence our thought process as well so when we have to uh, have a balanced uh, thought process we need to have a proper diet yeah so these external factors that you are talking about also include alcohol intake and drugs and stuff like that yeah. yes yes absolutely right maybe alcohol intake maybe certain addictions to other things yeah Okay, so now what, what, what I want you is to tell us a little bit about where you live. I know you are from Bangalore. Uh, what's, what's Bangalore like? How's your lifestyle? What's your sadhana? See, uh, Bangalore is one of the cosmopolitan cities in India, which is actually, I would say, the best city to live in. It's a very peaceful city, unlike uh, other cities which is really a bit... Uh, tough to live here the people are really friendly and uh, you need not uh, be afraid of uh, you know just being yourself so i would i would just say the climate here is also really good i would say the excellent climate here uh, one of the software hubs in india uh, it's also called a silicon valley yes uh, as uh, when it comes to my role here in uh, in bangalore well i am a small sadhaka and I do my uh, small sadhana. Yeah, I I visit temples, especially the old temples. There are a lot of old temples in Bangalore. There is a, a one old temple in Alsur. There is one temple near Maleshwaram, and uh, Bangalore city is uh, with lot of lot of temples. And I go there, get energy. I feel that energy, the positivity all around, and maybe that helps helps me. to study more gain more knowledge and you know help people <laughs> yes and that's that's the reason why we're talking now because you have a, a way of a mission and a vision and you have a business right tell us about astrology please yeah so uh, today uh, astrology or uh, numerology or uh, foreseeing signs you know the science of foreseeing has become a uh, a uh, very big uh, subject for few people it's a beautiful research subject for few people it's a curious subject they are very curious as to i go to astrologer and he'll say me something good and what i need to do will this happen or not and all that for few people it's like i go to astrologer just to find out certain things and nothing else you know so it's a wide vast and wide subject uh, where understanding the subject is actually very very difficult with god's grace uh, i believe uh, god has given me certain amount of um, blessing i would say to understand the subject the way it has to be understood and to interpret the way it has to be interpreted as well so when i speak about astrology there are various ways to predict right few people do tarot card few people just see your face and say something few people do akshaik reading nowadays they say they get message from uh, you know universe or the power they believe in and all that and few do numerology and certain people do astrology in astrology again few people believe in uh, uh, brihat parashara hora shastra few people follow the system of gemini sutras and few people system uh, i mean believe the system of nadi okay so there are various systems again uh, the system i follow is uh, both i mean i would say i follow the brihat parashara hora shastra as well as uh, gemini sutras to an extent and uh, i also do the nadi system i am uh, uh, a numerologist as well where i uh, do numerology and teach i mean teach numerology as well so uh, 
I believe the science is very easy. It's not a, a rocket science. It's not something which will just fly above your head. It just takes certain amount of uh, understanding and the capability to grasp certain things. There are a lot of hidden things uh, within the subject of astrology. So uh, decoding it is actually very simple and easy. If you can remember certain things in a certain dimension, it is actually very, very easy. So uh, here in Sai Asta, we have made it very easy. So we teach it and we discuss that as well. And uh, about the difference between Vedic astrology and Western astrology, is there a difference? Are there many things that are, that are not the same? See, uh, the considerations more or less are same, but uh, we consider we don't usually consider the uh, in the in the Vedic system of astrology there are only seven planets and two other planets Rahu and Ketu are shadow planets. But where it comes to uh, the Western astrology, they consider Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto as well. So we consider nine, and they consider three more. So the uh, other than this, the uh, I would say the calculation system also is uh, way different to Western and Vedic. We believe in uh, certain panchangas. I mean the siddhantas and panchangas. There is something called a Surya Siddhanta, Chandra Siddhanta, and Drik Siddhanta. And Westerners uh, as a whole, uh, in certain, certain areas, they follow certain other systems. So calculation is also very different. Yeah. And this, so, this type of astrology, is it like uh, predictive also? Or what, what's the use of astrology in the Hindu culture? See, here in Hindu culture, astrology I would say, uh, goes with in tangent. It's, it's one way of living itself. Because uh, as in you're born, you know, your, your chart, as you can, I mean, as uh, everybody can see, as you have posted it behind you, you know, in the background, that is caste. Okay, we call that as natal chart, right? The birth chart, the Janma Kundali or Lagna Kundali. So as in your born, certain, certain uh, planets are placed in the 12 houses, right? So after you are born, the next samskara is to name you, right? Then they go to an astrologer to find a good day to name you, right? After that, there is another samskara, which we call Karna Veda, you know, to just uh, pierce the ear. That is one samskara. So we'll again go to him to ask for that. Along with Anna Prashana, we have a, we will take a good day uh, as per Muhurta Bhaga, we will select one auspicious day for that baby where the actual feeding of normal food in a small very minute way will be started or initiated. Right? From here, for education, for each and everything, they consult an uh, astrologer. So astrology here is going in tangent with a human life, okay? It's a, a influential to an extent where it is a directional force, okay? It's, it's a proper directional force. If used properly, if people understand what has to be understood, the way it has to be understood, then this, uh, this is a wonderful science, yeah. So, so astrology, has... okay, go ahead. So the next uh, step after education is job. So people come and ask, what, uh, when will I get a job? After job is marriage. So there comes the logic of matchmaking. And then once the marriage is done, now it's time for childbirth. When will we have a baby child or a you know, baby girl or a boy? So after child, again, things change. And if they want to construct a house, they come to an astrologer. If they uh, have to do something auspicious, they visit an astrologer. For health, astrologer. For finance, astrologer. And astrologer has a, a, a versatile role where uh, uh, he will be addressing each and everything in one pocket. I mean, one basket, I would say. 
he should have such knowledge when he is addressing the issues because in astrology almost everything is uh, interlinked and uh, there is nothing which is uh, i would say which is not addressed in astrology just that one should know how to connect uh, certain things in a right way so that the right result is obtained but kartik then where is free will if everything is uh, set by the astrologer is there a space where we have free will beautiful question i appreciate this question see here of course we have a lot of liberty for our free will right as i just told you the first house uh, in astrology is tanu bhava right the second house is house house of immediate family wealth speech and finance right now i am talking about three things here in the second house right for example a person uh, comes to me and says whatever i say to uh, i say to somebody is mistaken right then i'll immediately go to see what his second house or second lord or how his second house is right do you understand what i mean his will his free will is to express what it is and i just mentioned astrology is directional and uh, a way which can is, is a correct correcting signs as well i can say see your second lord is as of now not good so maybe you do this in a this in this way your second lord will not trouble you till it is being troubled it is your free will right after you are being troubled only you are coming to an astrologer so um, i would say astrology is also a balancing uh, sign where it says or it speaks more or less on the limitation of your free will yeah. you no know, for example how much finance will i earn earning finance is limitless it only depends on somebody you know x y z person's capability right now i can guide you or i can give you tips to enhance the way of you earning more but i can't define or i can't i can't a uh, place a full stop of where you will stop earning so it is up to your the free will factor is always there it is just that you need to understand where the free will works for you in a good way and where maybe the same free will will work as a block factor yeah and one thing that i wanted to to tell you is that i noticed that you treat planets like living entities right so let's play saturn or ketu um you just say if you want to have ketu pleased or saturn pleased you have to do certain pujas or certain offerings is that right see there are various ways good question again you are very 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 well informed and uh, i would like to uh, uh i don't know if uh, appreciation is right word but i would like to thank you more uh, for good research you have done so yes very well asked see there are various uh, ways to actually uh, please a planet they say but i would say it's a way of communication right it's an affirmation you are making to yourself and you are communicating certain things to universe for example you said saturn oh saturn is a fearful planet is a dark energy he does that he does this right okay but what is actually saturn saturn is karma karaka what is karma karaka he is the one who will teach you how to live if you don't uh, actually act the way he wants you to act then he will correct you the way he wants you to be corrected so usually as you asked me the free will factor is curtailed by fact saturn that is why he is becoming scary if not he is a beautiful person you do good karma saturn will not trouble you now the pleasing part the expression of my gratitude my thanks or my request 
okay in the name of uh, maybe a puja a homa a havana or by distributing some things in the name of dana is just a symbolic of communication to the uh, universal living planets or the deities we call so it is just a symbolic there are various ways there is dana there is puja i mean it is a beautiful way of requesting god to do certain things in a you know in a descriptive manner there is havana bas uh, i will give you this thing i mean when i am offering you this particular thing i am now asking you i am requesting you i am pleading you to solve this issue of mine is a way or you can just sit and chant you know that is also a way or you can sing kirtana there are navavida bhaktis so you can connect to god in nine ways is what the system believes yes so it's all about communicating to god and just feeling that you have addressed him and he has taken it into consideration now he will act upon that's it and that's that's a good point to talk about is not braving right is not like telling okay i give you this but just be nice with me it's just a way of being humble or not it's it's not you can't bribe anybody because we believe that chart is prefixed you bribing him now he can he will not change or he will not give you anything less or he is not going to bless you with abundance it is just that we are we are now addressing him that we have noticed certain energy change or shift in energy because we have found out certain pattern or certain regular occurrences in our life so as i have found it out and i have also found out that you are the right person who has to be uh, who will actually solve the, this particular occurrence or who will block this particular occurrence so i am asking you to just consider my request please upon you where you consider or not but still i have faith in you i will request you to kindly help me you can bribe it is not a bribe system it is just a humble request you know as a as a as a child who is born you know who asks uh, his parents to grant his small wishes it is just like that yeah and that's a very interesting way because i think that um india has teach me so much i've been to your country many times and one thing that i noticed was that in temples they have an office where they get donations right and now what i'm learning from you is that probably these people who go and give donations they went to the astrologer and the astrologer said this is a good day to to do certain sevas no? donations for food or to the temple and that's not for like only the ego purpose but it's because i recognize that this planet or this system is bigger than me and i humbly go and give whatever i can see i would like to tell you in a different way here i i'm not here to complain about temples i'm not here against the people who are giving to the temples offering uh, offering to the temples because in earlier days temple was a place where all the cultural activity and people who had uh, who were socially not treated well or people who were destitute were actually taken care by temples so offering to temple is direct way of offering to people who are actually of not right status right so in tangent it is a social circuit you give to temple and in the name of temple all the cultural and the socio economic system is taken care of this was actually the system in the olden days maybe today as uh, we we see certain uh, i mean in certain places the system is bit haywire but with god's grace that also will be fixed with his daya and krupa i'm i'm very small to com comment on these uh, big topics <laughs> So what what's the hope for people who are just hearing this but they are like 50 or 60 years old it doesn't matter that they have not been aware of all, all this time and they can still do something about their chart See uh, it, it, this is a you know do you watch cricket 
yes i it's do like a, it's like a googly ball or like a spin to me <laughs> see now how do i answer this it depends on who the astrologer is it depends on what a uh, system he follows as i said there are navavida bhaktis right so the system he has opted to uh, to to actually communicate certain things or to, uh, to i would say to treat this certain problem it depends on the astrologer as a whole so uh, it is his discretion uh, if he is informed well he will do certain things in a good manner if he is not then he will do it in a different manner so that it is like depending on uh, i would say desha kala paristhiti and the knowledge what they have they do certain things in certain manner so we are not here to comment what is right and what is wrong because here the science itself the science of foreseeing itself is vast is vast maybe i would say fourth house is mother home and fixed property somebody this is my opinion about fourth house for example somebody else comes in and says it is the 12th house of third house so sorry 12th house of, of fifth house so though it is sukha bhava it is it is not sampurna sukha bhava maybe so we'll have to accept it and say okay fine maybe i am less informed and you are really well informed thanks for your interpretation because the science itself is is too vast and india being a country which is in the in the uh, landmass also this is very very vast and the culture followed here is also very diverse and the flow of information from ages has also been diverse so uh, to just stick on, sticking on to my point and proving my point right always may actually not be right i have one question kartik um i i am understanding that there is a very individual way because you have to study the chart is there also a collective um, advice that you can give us for the challenging times that we are facing um what do you see in terms of health issues around the world is there something we can do although we don't have a specific chart uh, as a collective consciousness to change these energies see uh i would like to say certain things right for example when we are talking about uh, collectively doing something right there are a lot of things where we can collectively do for that matter we can uh, collectively chant dhanvantri mantra we can chant ayushya mantras we can chant mahamrutyunjaya mantra which will actually eradicate apamrutyu so we can uh, we can chant a lot of other mantras for uh, uh, peaceful and joyful living and there is a i would say to keep ourselves clean you know here we, when i am talking about just keeping clean it's not just sanitizing your hand taking uh, i mean wearing good cloth and taking bath here antar bahishta suchi is what is meant so antar suchi is inner inner clean, uh, clean, uh, cleansing and bahishta suchi is external cleansing so to do to do this i would say mantras and uh, havana or the homa ritual right by offering certain certain amount of um, what's it uh, i mean while chanting and offering to god with the medium of fire will actually be really really benefit while chanting the pious mantras Okay and this is a good time to speak about the what's the benefit and how does this fire offering works See here what uh, I would like to tell is ultimate destruction okay is done by fire right I mean once fire catches everything is reduced to ashes right and our people or sanatanis believe that 
offering to god is done through fire and fire is the medium where whatever offering you give to god can be uh, directly or easily given away to or god will accept it the right way number 1 so as you are you know the energy what you have is by you eating food the havana therapy or the actual purpose of homa is just giving god certain amount of food in a right way right so that is the actual meaning of homa or havana now the benefit of homa or havana is if you look at the normal uh, materialistic way you will have uh, the the aspicious gomaya which is uh, the cow the cake or the cow dung cake which uh, we all believe the uh, most uh, um, uh, sacred one uh, you know to light and we have beautiful fragranted uh, sugandha dravyas okay now we have certain amount of uh, different different uh, i mean plants and uh, herbs and also certain tree twigs all this together is when we offer it in one particular way we are now creating we are now creating one certain energy we are now creating one certain energy which the energy is works as a chemistry i would say when we uh, uh, for example when i am offering ghee i will say swaha kara before offering ghee i will make one manifestation right i am chanting a mantra while chanting a mantra i do a manifestation beautiful manifestation and then i offer it to god and then after that i say swaha when i offer ghee so on a whole this will create a beautiful ambience around you the environment will be really good and as far as health is concerned when the ghee the proper ghee is offered to this particular ritual um that will that will actually work as a beautiful uh, what's it people say it has increased oxygen levels for few people the as i said the chemistry which works with the twigs and the uh, the herbs what we use has given them beautiful mindset has calmed them down and for few of them they thought that uh, after having attended this they could think in right way so that they could uh, decide or take right decisions and uh, by taking right decisions it has benefited them so on a whole this works as a color therapy this works as a donation therapy dana also because you are directly offering it and what are you actually doing you are burning your ego sitting in front of that whenever you are surrendering to god you are burning your ego as well so when you burn your ego obviously you have right mindset ego is a biggest blockage so havana has multiple benefits i mean practically i just try to address but with spiritual sense uh, with the exact uh, meaning of havana maybe we have a next discussion yes. about this Yes and we we are planning and I want to invite everybody who's going to be able to see this we're going to do an online oma therapy right Yeah and uh for people who don't know what oma means what is oma therapy specifically See I would like to say uh when we practically do that uh maybe I will show them each and everything I will explain them and uh maybe they see it feel it and then know it uh, that helps a lot okay so it's going to be a life experience right online yes. life experience okay yes. and just to end this this talk and i really want to thank you so much kartik because i think this is a an, a portal that we are opening for people who are questioning themselves you mentioned before the the chart the one that is here behind me um do people need to have certain details uh, to make that chart how, how does that work and do you do private consultations yes very much see uh, all uh, we require is uh, time of birth sorry date of birth time of birth and place of birth and yes we very much do private consultations maybe we do it uh, on a zoom or uh, any online medium as of now 
so we do consider doing it and we also teach numerology with a lot of easy techniques which will help them decode lot and lot of lot of things in life which will make their living a very hassle uh, hassle free task yeah perfect okay so we are going to be in touch uh, we are planning to do more of this type of classes online thank you so much and i really wish you a very wonderful year thank you so much thank you wish you a, a very good year too thank you so much for giving me an opportunity thank you and wh when are we going to do oma therapy can you say the day and time for india and also we are going to uh, broadcast it see uh, yeah i i would like to thank uh, all the people who are watching me live today uh, i would appreciate you giving us the amount of time what you have given us and uh, maybe if i have not if i have given you any information which you are falling short of you can kindly uh, get back to alciane so that she will inform me maybe we'll have a different debate on such subjects as well so i would like to thank thank you all on that occasion now about the homa therapy we will have it on 12th of january at uh, around say 6:30 pm indian standard time if um, yeah that is what we have decided yes so we are going to just uh, invite people and they are asking if you could just send me the link that i can post on facebook about these uh, mantras that you say that we can just start uh, chanting so we are absolutely to... i will give you see before uh, say around at 2:00 uh, o'clock on 12th of uh, january i'll send you certain small small mantras see i am not going to make this homa therapy a glittery show i am just going to make this therapy a practical and feasible and doable task which is really easy which is which is going to be something which is like uh, the most wanted rituals will only be taken care of and the entire time taken will be less than 40 minute as no glitter don't expect us to uh, you know have that oom factor around so uh you know so it is going to be a, a glitter less and more important issues covered ritual yeah so it's going to be like a condensed version of how to do oma therapy right absolutely absolutely that is what we need to till, uh, teach people as well yeah yeah okay so see you on the 12th have a nice day thank you thank you have a nice day too thank you bye bye